Hi guys, I'm Charles, and today we're going to be painting the Creed Kill Team from the Kill Team Octarius box. A little over a year late, but the new release of the Guard Codex has really enthusiastically got me up and excited about the the Guard, so I wanted to paint up the Krieg in the iconic blue trench coats and rebreather masks. The first thing that I tackled was the coat, and to do this I really wanted to make it punch the blue out a lot more because in my test model it all looked sort of the same sort of grey. To do this I started with a base coat of Cold Corpse Blue all over the mini, straight over black. For this I wanted to just make sure I had really clean, thick, consistent coverage, and then I would come back in later and add the highlights and add the shadows in a very manual process. With the Cold Corpse Blue down, I started to mix in some Gravestone Blue which I initially did in a three to two mixture. This created a lighter color, but still quite desaturated blue that I used to add the highlights all over the coat. Then I gave it a final highlight with pure gravestone blue. And I really now want to bring out that blue in a much stronger way. To do this, I used wolf gray, which is a stronger sort of blue, thinned it quite heavily and just applied it over all of the final highlight points on the coat. This helps resaturate the blues but without bringing the color down too much and because I've thinned it you can still see the highlights underneath it. This gave me a really strong blue that I think reads really really well and definitely doesn't read gray at all but there is a leaning to the gray because I wanted to really emulate that World War One French uniform style of blue gray. The first thing that I tackled was the coat and to do this I really wanted to make it punch the blue out a lot more because in my test model it all looked sort of the same sort of gray. To do this, I started with a base coat of Cold Corpse Blue all over the mini, straight over black. For this, I wanted to just make sure I had really clean, thick, consistent coverage, and then I would come back in later and add the highlights and add the shadows in a very manual process. With the Cold Corpse Blue down, I started to mix in some Gravestone Blue, which I initially did in a three to two mixture. This created a lighter color, but still quite desaturated blue that I used to add the highlights all over the coat. Then I gave it a final highlight with pure gravestone blue, and I really now want to bring out that blue in a much stronger way. To do this, I used wolf gray, which is a stronger sort of blue, thinned it quite heavily, and just applied it over all of the final highlight points on the coat. This helps resaturate the blues, but without bringing the color down too much and because I've thinned it, you can still see the highlights underneath it. This gave me a really strong blue that I think reads really, really well and definitely doesn't read gray at all, but there is a leaning to the gray because I wanted to really emulate that World War I French uniform style of blue gray. With the coat done, the next thing to tackle was the trousers and the gloves. For this, I wanted a washed out gray sort of mass produced cotton. It's just a churn mill, it's not anything special. To start, I gave it everything a base coat of wizard gray, and this gray I use a lot throughout all of the mini when I start mixing it in to create the highlights in the flak armor and the metal. This will help add a sense of cohesion up and down the mini and really draw your eyes to that lovely blue coat. Once the wizard gray was down, I gave everything a highlight with Kakaradon gray. Just super quick, not spending too much time here, I just wanted to get this step done because it's not really one of the major focal points of the model. What is going to be one of the focal points on the model, however, is the leather. There's a big backpack and they all have the rebreather mask unit in front of them. I really like the deep red leather effect that I'm going for here. So I gave everything a base coat of curious leather to then add a glaze over the top of borehide mixed with black in a one-to-one -one ratio to add shadows into the center points before adding a chunky edge highlight with bore height around the edge to pull out some more of the texture so it started really punching up into those red light colors before giving it a final very fine edge highlight with temple stone and I use this in a scratchy way to really add the texture effect of worn leather. Next is moving on to the flak armor and in the books this isn't a metallic this is a, a ceramic sort of mass-produced Kevlar-esque material and so I wanted to enforce that with what I've seen of stab vests and horse riding vests and anything that's sort of body protecting in a very dark grey but not black so I still want you to be able to see the texture. To do this I started with a base coat of doom black and I progressively mixed in more and more wizard grey 
into the mix. So I went from a one to one ratio to a two to one to a three to one before using just neat wizard gray to really add the final edge highlights and some very thinned ones to do the texturing, giving it some chips and scrapes. I also used wizard gray to edge highlight all of the panels on the gun so that it all looks like it's this ubiquitous mass produced one guy is no different from the other, it's all the same. And I really wanted to give that theme, but still have enough visual interest so it's not just flat. And now perhaps for the most iconic piece in the Krieg uniform, it's that gas mask. I also used the same colours and techniques on the pack roll on the back because I want this canvas sort of feel. Again, everything's the same. I don't want too much individuality because when these are in a group on the table, I want them to look just like a horde to sacrifice sort of vibes. So for the gas mask I gave a base coat of Skeleton Legion. This required two thin coats to really pump up the coverage before highlighting with Griffin Claw and a final highlight with Ivory Tusk. The eye lenses I then painted black and the rings I painted in a silver and then had to go back in with the black and various colours of the Skeleton Legion and Griffin Claw to cover up the bits where I missed. The last part of the model is the metals. For this, I used a simple base coat of Surcoat Silver on all of the metals on the sword, on the rivets, on the gas mask and the connector to the box, and the eagle on the top and parts of the gun, just to add a bit of visual interest with true metallics. Then I came back in with a highlight of Mithril Silver, which I gave a highlight to all of the metal pieces, but also picked out the buttons on the coat so that they really stand out against the blue. The last thing to do is to tone it all back down and to do this I mixed a very thin glaze of black and curious leather together to create this sort of halfway between a null oil and an agrax earthshade wash which I applied all over the model to bring down the saturation and tie it all together and give it a common sort of filter almost. To finish off the mini I applied a diorama paste dark earth to the base as it's going to create a sort of muddy trenchy vibe. In the future I might come in with something like Valhalla and Blizzard or some tufts to add a bit more visual interest on there but for now I just wanted to get this ready and done so that I could cross him off. And with that this Krieger is finished. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you taking the time. If you enjoyed this video in this different style where I don't show you all of the painting job in um, quick speed let me know down below in the comments. If there's anything else you would like to see me paint, also let me know down there. If you want to be notified when I next upload, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to get those notifications. And hopefully I catch you in the next one.